So in the previous few videos, we've learned a lot about linear equations. And really, we've focused on different forms that you can write these linear equations in. First, we learned about slope-intercept form, and then we learned about point-slope form. Both of those forms involve the slope of a line. And really, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk more about the slope of a line. The slope, just this measure of how steep the line is. We use the letter M to denote it. And often, people think about it as maybe rise over run is often how it's taught. But really the idea is you just have, it's a ratio of how much the line goes up to how much the line goes to the right. And you can think about that kind of algebraically as the difference in the y coordinates divided by the difference in the x coordinates. In all of the previous examples, we've just been talking about one line. But in this video, I want to talk about two different lines. You've probably heard of the terms parallel and perpendicular before. Parallel lines are sort of informally speaking, just lines that sort of run side by side, maybe lines that never intersect, something like that. Whereas perpendicular lines are lines that sort of cross at a right angle, loosely speaking, sort of form an X, if you will. What I want to do is take advantage of your knowledge that you already have of parallel and perpendicular lines and kind of talk about them in terms of the slope of the lines. So if I gave you these two lines here, maybe I'll call one L1 and the other one L2. Because these lines run side by side, because they never intersect each other, because they're parallel, they kind of have the same level of steepness, loosely speaking. And since slope is the metric we use to quantify how steep they are, it's probably not any surprise to anybody that two lines are parallel if, and only if, they have the exact same slope. The big piece of information that I'm supposed to teach you about parallel lines is something you probably knew coming into this class, even though you might not have thought about it in these exact terms, is that lines are parallel if they have the exact same slope. What can you do with that? Well, here's an example. Find the slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form, that was from a couple videos ago. Slope-intercept form is the y equals mx plus b. Find the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line that is parallel to this line that passes through this point. So the idea here is we have these two different lines. Line one, we have the equation already. It's 4x equals 2y minus 9. But that's not what we want. We want to know about line two. And we don't have the equation of line two, but our goal is to come up with the equation of line two. How can we figure that out? Well, we know that line two passes through the point two, three. So we have a point on the line. If we only knew its slope, we'd be done. Unfortunately, the slope of line two is not given to us explicitly in this problem, but we have enough information to figure it out. Because line two and line one are parallel, the slope for line two is the exact same as the slope for line one. And we can figure out the slope of line one because we have the equation of line one. How do you figure out the slope when you have the equation? Well, probably the easiest way is to get it into slope-intercept form. Right? Solve this equation for y. So maybe I'd add nine to both sides of the equation, and that would give me two y is equal to four x plus nine. And then divide both sides of the equation by two. I get y equals two x plus nine halves. Just by looking at this, I know that the slope is two, and the y-intercept is 9 halves. I don't care at all about the y-intercept. All I care about is the slope. Because, again, line 1 and line 2 are parallel, the slope of line 1 must be the exact same as the slope of line 2. Now I have all the information I need about line 2 to come up with its slope-intercept form. I have its slope, and I have a point it passes through. I guess I really have two options. I could go straight to slope-intercept form by plugging this in for m and this in for x and y and solving for b. Although I think what instead I'm going to do is use point-slope form. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And plug these in for m, x1, and y1 respectively. So I got y minus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 2. If it just asks for an equation of the line that is parallel to 4x equals 2y minus 9 and passes through this point, I'd be done at this stage. But since it explicitly said, give me slope-intercept form, I should change this into slope-intercept form. Fortunately, that's easy enough to do. All I got to do is solve for y. It's easier to solve for y after you get rid of these parentheses. So maybe what I'll do first is take this 2 and distribute it through the parentheses. I get 2x minus 4. Then I'll add 3 to both sides of the equation, and I get y equals 2x minus 1. This would be my final answer. I'd be done with the problem. Note that these two lines, y equals 2x plus 9 halves and y equals 2x minus 1, are parallel to each other because they have the exact same slope, but they're not the same line. This one has a y-intercept of 9 halves. This one has a y-intercept of negative 1. 
If you're a visual learner, line one, because its y-intercept is 9 halves, which is like 4 and a half, would cross my y-axis right here. And because it has a slope of 2, from this point it goes up 2 units each time it goes over by 1 unit. So loosely speaking, my line is going to look like this. Line 2, however, has a y-intercept of negative 1, so it's going to cross the y-axis down here at negative 1. It has the same slope, so it goes up 2 units every time it goes right 1 unit. Here's another point on that line. I connect these with a straight line, and I end up with a graph of line 2, which again is parallel to line 1. If that made sense, great. If it didn't, don't worry. We're going to do another example to kind of hammer this home. The key thing to take away here is that two lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. And I guess technically they need a different y-intercept because they have the same y-intercept. They're not parallel, they're the same line. But you don't have to worry about little nuances like that. Slope's the same, that means the lines are parallel. Okay, but what if they're not parallel? What if they're perpendicular? Well, we know that two lines are parallel if they have the same slope, but if they're perpendicular, they certainly don't have the same slope. However, even though the slopes aren't the same, there is a nice relationship between the slopes. And you can kind of talk yourself into why they have this relationship if you want. But the easy answer is the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other. That sounds a lot scarier than it is. Negative just means you have to change the sign. Oh, that makes sense. If one line is going up as I look at it left to right, then a line that's perpendicular to that would have to be going down when I look at it from left to right. So they're negative of each other. But they also have to be reciprocals of each other. Reciprocal just means when you write it as a fraction, you're going to flip that fraction upside down. And that you could probably talk yourself into also if you sort of look at two different examples and think about like if this one is not very steep, this would have to be steeper. And I'd attain that by flipping the fraction upside down. But I don't want to get too much into why this is the case. I think this might be an instance where it's easier to just sort of believe me. So for example, if this line right here had a slope of, I don't know, it looks like maybe it goes up two every time it goes to the right by three. So suppose this line has a slope of two thirds. Well, if these two lines are perpendicular, what that means is that this line would have a slope of negative three halves. Wait, how'd you come up with that? I just changed the sign on this thing. This one's positive, so this one's negative. And then I took the fraction and flipped it upside down. So two thirds changed into three halves. Just like the big takeaway from above is that parallel lines always have the same slope. The big takeaway down here below is that perpendicular lines, slopes are always negative reciprocals of each other. So think two thirds changed into negative three halves. What can we do with that? Well, we can do an example almost identical to the one that we did up here. Suppose you were asked to find the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line that is perpendicular to 4x equals 2y minus 9 that passes through this point 2, 3. So again, I have two different lines. Maybe I'll again call them line 1 and line 2. Line 1 has the equation 4x equals 2y minus 9, which we already wrote in slope-intercept form as y equals 2x plus 9 halves. So we know that line one has a slope of two and a y-intercept of nine halves. Line two, we're told, passes through the point two, three. So we have a point on the line. If we only knew what its slope was, we'd be done because we know how to come up with the equation of a line if we know its slope and one point that it passes through. We're not explicitly told the slope here, but we can figure it out because we know that these two lines are perpendicular to each other. So because the slope of line one is two, or two divided by one, if you want to think about this as a fraction, that means the slope of line two must be negative because this one's positive. And then I take two divided by one and flip it upside down, I'd get one divided by two. Because the slope of line one is two, the slope of line two must be negative one half. If you can figure that out, you've used all the information you need about the lines being perpendicular, and we can finish up the problem. Find the slope-intercept form of this equation? Sure, no problem. Maybe I'll start by finding the point-slope form. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I'll plug in m, x1, and y1 as negative 1 half, 2, and 3 respectively, giving me y minus 3 equals negative 1 half times x minus 2. Again, if it just asked for any form of the equation of the line that's perpendicular to this and passes through this, I'd be done at this stage. Point slope form would be totally fine, but it doesn't. It explicitly asked me for slope intercept form, so I better write this in slope intercept form. The way I do that is I solve for y, so I'm gonna add three to both sides of the equation, but it makes life a little bit easier if, before you do that, you take this negative one half and distribute it through the parentheses. 
So I get y minus three equals negative one half times x plus one. Where'd that plus one come from? Negative one half times negative two. A negative times a negative is a positive. And one half times two is just one, either because, yeah, twice one half is two, or because you think about this two is two over one, and one over two times two over one is two over two, which reduces to just one. Now I wanna solve for y, so I add three to both sides of the equation, and I get y equals negative one half x plus four. This is the slope intercept form of line two, the line that is perpendicular to line one, but passes through this point two, three. Again, for the visual learner out there, line one has a y-intercept of nine halves, so it crosses the y-axis up here between four and five, and it has a slope of two, so it goes up two units each time it goes to the right by one unit. So, loosely speaking, it looks like this. Line two has a y-intercept of four, because the value of b in y equals mx plus b is four. So what that means is it crosses the y-axis right here, just barely beneath this one, but it has a slope of negative one half. So it goes down one unit each time it goes to the right by two units. So here's another point on its graph. If I were to connect those dots in red, I'd come up with a line that looks like this. And sure enough, this line and this line appear to be perpendicular. That's all I got on parallel and perpendicular lines.